G'day viewers, this is the New Jersey LP46 on the New York Trenton route. We're going to learn how to drive this beast. So let's jump in the cab. Just inside the door here, excuse my voice, we've got the alerter safety switch. I'm going to turn that on because I want to show the alerter. Now, I'm going to turn on ATC and Axis in this one. <coughs> excuse me. Unlike the Acela, where you don't want to do that right now. So let's jump in the engineer's seat. Windscreen wiper controls, if you need them, are down here, left and right. Our reverser, let me just turn on the cab light. There's a little needle sticking out of the reverser just here where the dot is that tells you what it's set to. Right now it's set to isolated, which is the position you use when the cab is shut down. So let's just go to forwards. And let's cut in our brakes so that we're in control of this train. Let's get our doors open since we need to do that. Headlights on. Ditch lights on. And we can leave pretty much everything else alone. You don't need to do too much else to this one. Now the lights are already on in the train in the back, so we don't need to do anything for that. You see the brake handle jump, I'm just matching the uh, rail driver position to the position in the train. It's time to lock our doors. Now our throttle on this one is dynamic braking if you push it away from you and power if you pull it towards you. So let's get the brakes releasing. A couple of honks on the horn. And we can power up. Brakes are now coming off. On the right hand gauge, red needle is the brake cylinder pressure, so it tells you that the brakes have released. White needle is the brake pipe throughout the train. And on the left hand side we've got our equalising reservoir is white and the main reservoir is red. The equalising reservoir is the one you want to watch while you're obeying the ADU. Now in this one, if you have the systems cut out, you'll discover that you're not actually getting speed indications and you kind of need them. So you kind of need to cut the safety systems in on this one. You notice I have got the HUD running. I'm going to kill it because we're going to drive solely to the train. Now I've only got light power on because we're only allowed to do 20 mile an hour through here. Now you will occasionally on this route see some very brief speed changes. And it's literally, it's there and it's gone. Um, those are problematic. This is an early access build. So hopefully those things will get addressed. Just pulling out a New York pen here. Just saw some floating equipment, so hopefully that'll get addressed too. There's our alerter. So I'll just press the Q key to acknowledge that. You've also got this big button here. And this big button here. So you can press any of those. I'm just going to throttle off now. Now the next time the alerter fires, I'm going to let it stop the train because I want to show you how to recover. It's a, a bit of a bit of a detailed recovery procedure in this one. Now I'm leaving the cab lights on because I want you to see what we're doing. We are in a tunnel. So we've just been told we're allowed to go up to 60, but I'm deliberately not going to touch the throttle or anything at the moment because we're just dealing with the alerter at the moment. You can see on the indicator here that we've got a green bar up to 60 now. So we'll just let this speed up by itself because we're going downhill. And soon enough the alerter should fire. It's like we have watched pot. There we go. So it's firing. We're going to let it stop the train because I want it to apply a penalty brake. Here we go. We can see that the equalizing reservoir is dropping, the brake pipe's dropping, the brake cylinder pressure is going up. So our train is stopping. And you'll also notice good old PCS is open. The way you recover from this is put your brake handle to emergency, let the rest of the air drop out. 
reset the alerter and release your brake handle the brakes will start pumping up again you notice the PCS light up there on the panel has gone out and we'll be able to start driving as soon as the brakes have pumped up there they go they're starting to release so we can power up now now if you need to contact your signaler there's a button over here contact dispatcher there's a push to talk button it's occluded by the horn a little bit so you need to go just a little bit left of it okay. let's kill the bell so we're allowed to go 60. this train doesn't have cruise control so you're on your own fella fella in the totally non-sexed version speed it up I'm going to leave the alerter turned on I just have to try and remember to acknowledge it all the time now you want to keep a little bit away from your maximum speed so it's set for 60 we're on manual control give yourself some time to react so I'd sit in about 50 55 now, I'd keep the hints on for next signal and next speed until you know the route. Next signal, in theory, the ADU is kind of going to tell you anyway. Because it'll tell you to stop. We are going uphill now. Travelling under the East River. Leaving not only the city of New York, but the state of New York. Heading for New Jersey on the other side. You can turn on your um, gauge lights in this one as well if you want to. There's a switch there which uh, turns them on. So if you're driving at night time or in a tunnel and you don't want to use the cab light. Now if you want to do a quicker reaction time for speed indications, there's no real reason why you can't actually just leave the brakes in lap. But, uh, just be careful if you go a little bit further they'll apply not normal driving practice to leave them there but it uh, gives you a little bit of an edge when you have to respond quickly because your speed's changing down I'm using a rail driver to manipulate the throttle and brake controls, but it works fine with controller and keyboard and mouse. Alright, we're allowed to go up to 75 now, so we can put some power on. We're going uphill, we've got a big set behind us. Heading to Secaucus Junction. You can see from the hints from the HUD we've got a 90 coming up. And I've got an overspeed, so you just want to get about 15 pounds out of there. 15 pounds off the equalizing reservoir. Release that. Yeah, I acknowledged in there. This happens all very quickly, it's hard to explain it, but what basically happened was um, we had to come down to 60 because uh, it looks like CSS wanted us to do it so I had to break hard and what I did is I watched the equalizing reservoir this line here I brought that down by 15 pounds it's a little bit more than 15 pounds but 15 would have been enough and as soon as the speed started to drop I acknowledged system accepted that I was in the braking curve and when we got down to 60 I released just acknowledge the speed down there to 45. We're already doing less than that. So you need to acknowledge when the speed drops. You don't need to acknowledge when the speed goes up. I'm 
And the safety systems work pretty well in the ALP46, so I do encourage you to turn them on. We have an approach here. Coming over into a platform. Remember this is an American train, so they like to be warned. Still light application of the air brakes here. Could use a dynamic brake to slow down as well, but because we're actually stopping, I find the air brakes just a simpler way to do it. So I've released those, back to lap, get close to the end of the platform and I'll apply again. Brought our speed right down. And we'll do a heavier service application this time to stop us. And lap. And doors open. So we've seen how to accelerate, we've seen how to set it up, we've seen how to stop, we've seen how to reset from an emergency stop from the alerter. Same as if you do an emergency stop from the brakes. So if you put your brakes into emergency, it's the same reset procedure. Uh, wipers. Since it's starting to rain, we might as well put the uh, left ones on too. They work quite nicely. Let's get the bell off. Shut the doors. And away we go again. So we'll release the brakes. And get a bit of power on. And away we go. You can see our indicators on the left display there that we are indeed powering. You can also hear it. Now we're heating off to Newark Pen. So we'll keep driving this tutorial just to Newark Pen. We won't go all the way along the route. We're out of the platform. We can turn off the bell. I'm going to put my brake back to the lap position so I've got that quick response. Pretty interesting, I've just noticed that makes the no power brake light up, so... Alright, let's put the brakes in the hold position to get that quick response, because we do want to be able to have our power brakes. Power brakes would also be called dynamic brakes most of the time. Now, the ADU has just beeped a couple of times. It's told me we're allowed to go up to 90, so we'll give it some more juice and off we go. It's a commuter train, it's not generally about efficiency, it's about no throttle and heavy braking, or lots of throttle. And I'm going to have to throttle down a little bit, because I don't know if you could hear that squeaking, but uh, we were losing traction there, and you could see that the speed needle was jumping a little bit too. Let's go back to full throttle, and we can see we are sanding. You can see it's on there, so we know we're slipping. It doesn't cope quite as well by itself like the Acela does. So we'll try and power back up again now. Now we know we're coming to a 60, so we'll just hold the speed there. So as you get to know the route, you could probably turn off the, the hints from the HUD. We've got a speed down, so I've acknowledged that. We're already doing 60, so we don't have to do anything. The system just goes, yep, okay, no problem. Now at 60 for that bridge, we're back to 90, or we will be shortly. There we go, we're back up to 90. So we can start speeding up again. On our way to Newark Pen, which is where we'll stop this tutorial. Now on the way into Newark Pen, we'll get some speed down indications we can see that we're going to be coming to a 60 zone in 0.8 of a mile so I'm going to throttle off now because there's actually no point accelerating all the way up in fact I'm going to start dynamic braking Starting to slow us down. Yep, 
it will get us down to the 60 in time. If you need to get down quicker, use your air brakes. You can see I am behind the brake curve there, so I'm actually getting a train stop penalty. I should be able to make that okay by applying air brake and releasing. And the brakes have come off, so I've averted that train stop because I got behind the braking curve. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a red mark appeared on the speed indicator and my speed was above that red mark. So the train said, well, you're not gonna make it, so I'm gonna brake for you. And I averted that by applying some air brake, getting down below the braking speed curve. So I got my speed needle below the red mark and then I acknowledged and released the brakes and it was fine. I took control back. So you need to stay on top of it. Use your uh, route awareness just like you do with any other route. And I've got a 45 coming up as we approach Newark Pen. But this time I'm going to use the air brakes to get down to the right speed. I'll just get it down a little bit. Now let's release that. So we're still over the required speed, but only just. So this time when the 45 comes on, so I'm gonna to have to accelerate a little bit now because I've uh, gone to the required speed. I wanna be just above it, about 46, 47, because I wanna show you what happens, that'll do. So what you're gonna see is the speed indicator is gonna go red. There we go. Now we need to brake to stay behind that. So light service brake, acknowledge, and we're fine. And we can release. Sorry, I was acknowledging the alerter then. It actually wants me to slow down to 30, which is fine. I got onto the braking curve and acknowledged. I was probably a little aggressive in the braking there. You don't need to be quite that aggressive. Now, the mistake I made is the mistake probably a lot of people will make. I watched the uh, brake pressure coming up in my brake cylinder. I should have been watching the brake pressure reducing on my white needle on the EQ. So get, get the equalizing reservoir down about 15 pounds. So from 110 to only about middle here between these two would be enough because that will react much quicker than watching the uh, brake cylinder pressure. Watch that as we come to a stop in the platform and you'll see what I mean. Now arriving Newark Pen. And we've gotten a bit over it. I've just honked for coming into the platform. Now you see how I watched, I took the EQ down to 100 there. And you saw how much slower the brake cylinder pressure came up. Give it a bit more of a service break. And we are stopped. Well, there you go. That's pretty much how to drive an ALP 46. Now, remember when you need to brake to match the braking curve, watch the air coming out on the equalizing. So it normally sits on 110. If you need to do an application, bring it down from 110 to 100 to about, about in the middle between 90 and 100, that's 15 pounds. And that should be enough to get into suppression um, and then put it back into laps. As soon as you hit the 15 pounds between 85 and 90, drop it back in 85 and 90. No, sorry, 95 and 100. Um, drop that back into lap on the brake stand so that you don't actually come to a stop when you're acknowledging. Right, I might drive this one just a little bit further. 
releasing the brakes and a bit of throttle. Now, unlike the Acela, this one you can throttle up straight away while the brakes are releasing because it won't actually throttle up. It doesn't have an interlock, but it won't throttle up until it's ready. Out of the platform, bell off. Heading for Newark International Airport. I'm just driving a little bit further. I normally try and keep the tutorial shorter than this, but I'm just driving a little bit further because I want to show you again what I'm talking about with the equalizing reservoir. So we're only allowed to do 35. So I'll just pull my power back now now that we're moving. 35 is indicated by the green line here. It's gone up to 70. We don't need to acknowledge anything. We can just accelerate. So I'm just braking. There we go, and I've got my equalizing down, and I've acknowledged, and we're now coming down onto the braking curve. The suppression lights come on, and I'll release the brakes now. Had to acknowledge again then, because I released just a touch early. So as you can tell, it does actually take quite a lot of getting used to to drive this with the safety systems enabled. But get used to it, you will. Now you don't have to have the enforcement turned on. The display still actually does work if you have ATC and access turned off. But I find this one's drivable. You have your... Um, oh yeah, I should have done that moment. But it's drivable and it recovers. So it's actually quite a lot of fun to have these systems turned on. We'll finish this one at Newark Airport. Now one thing I have noticed with the alerter with the ALP46, when you change ends to the cab car, and I'll show you how to shut down to go to the cab car in a moment actually, I'll do that at Newark Airport. I won't actually go to the cab car, but I'll show you how to shut down for it. Um, when you change ends, the alerter sounds continuously outside the train so you might want to turn that off before you head down to the cab car picking the alerter I say it's named three times and there it is now it says we're allowed to go up to 60 in fact it says we're allowed to go up to 80 so we're not very far out of the airport stop so we'll probably get told to slow down again soon. Let's just put that back to hold. Powering off because we're coming into the station now. Do a light service break. take out roughly 15 pounds then it's going to stop a little bit early so I could have waited a little bit longer then all right now let's see what you do just to shut your cab down so let's say we were going to go up to the cab car at the other end first thing you want to do is put your brake into the handle off position and let that do its thing when it's finished Cut the brakes out, ditch and crossing lights off, headlights off, make sure your throttle's at zero, you can turn off your windscreen wipers because we're not going to need those again. Bring your reverser back to the isolated position 
and that's it we can now leave this cab and go down to the cab car at the back now as i mentioned the alerter does sound at least in this build and this is a pre-release early access version the alerter does sound constantly after it, you leave this cab and it goes off so i would cut it out and cut it back in when you come back so we will go to the cab car in another tutorial but this has been the alp 46 on the new york trenton route in train sim world 3. all right hope that was helpful for you if you've got any uh, comments or you need some help just chuck it in the comments under the video and we'll go from there have fun folks see ya